Hello everyone, myself Jyotin Mai, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, BV Raji Institute of Technology, Narsapur. Today I am going to discuss about software engineering subject. That is uh, the uh, topic uh, today's topic is waterfall model. Coming to the introduction, software engineering. Uh, what actually the software engineering is? The software engineering provides a standard procedure for designing and developing the software. What actually the software uh, meant for? The software is the combination of programs, data structures, and documentation. So, software engineering is nothing but it's a systematic and disciplined approach to develop a software. Uh, the, ultimately, the result, uh, result of uh, the software engineering is an effective and reliable software which is, uh, 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 which is wanted by the customer. Software development process model. Uh, for developing a software, a process model is required. Uh, we can define a software development process model like it is a life cycle model uh, uh, by which uh, uh, we can develop the software. The software process model represents the order in which the activities of software engineering takes place. It describes the sequence in which order the activities are to be performed in order to develop a qualitative software. Coming to the types of software development process model, we are having various types of software development process models based on the requirements of the customer we need to select uh, and the process model. Process model is waterfall model which we are going to discuss in uh, today's class. And the second one is prototyping model. Third one is iterative development process models. Again, iterative development process models are classified into four types. A rational unified process model, time boxing model, extreme programming model, and agile development model. Coming to the introduction of waterfall model, it is the oldest software process model and was introduced in 1970s by a person Winston Royce. It is also known as linear sequential model or classic life cycle model. Why it is called as linear sequential model is all the phases or activities of waterfall model are executed in a linear and sequential fashion. Uh, whereas uh, the, it is called as classic life cycle model. Why? Because it is the oldest process model. So it is termed as a classic life cycle model. All the activities are processed in a sequential order here and each phase must be completed before the next phase can begin without overlapping with each other. This is the diagram uh, which represents the uh, sequence of activities uh, in the software development in uh, waterfall model. First one is requirements analysis. Before the requirements analysis, we need to conduct the feasibility study uh, regarding to know whether to proceed for how feasible uh, the situation is, whether to go further or uh, stop here. And system design, implementation, testing, deployment, and maintenance. Let us discuss one by one phase now. So, uh, the feasibility study, the first and foremost activity we need to conduct before beginning the software project is feasibility study. The main goal of this particular phase is to determine whether it would be the financially and technically feasible to develop the software. And this feasibility study involves understanding the problem in depth and also will determine the various possible strategies to solve the problem. So we need to conduct deep analysis about the problem which is going to be resolved. So here the answers uh, after feasibility study is yes, no and maybe means whether to proceed further or uh, uh, we can stop here or we can uh, resolve the issues and proceed further. There are uh, three types in the feasibility study, economic feasibility, organizational feasibility, and technical feasibility and schedule feasibility. There are four types of feasibility studies are there. Coming to the economic feasibility, whether the project can be completed within the budget or not. Operational feasibility is whether the problem can be solved within the existing and the proposed system in the user environment. Whatever the resources available in the user environment, the project accommodates within the available resources or not. Organizational feasibility, can the project be handled consistently with the company policies and objectives? Technical feasibility, can the problem be solved with the present computer system or and available resources? Schedule feasibility, can the project can be complete, can the project be completed within the scheduled time? 
the main aim of requirements analysis phase is to analyze and understand the exact requirements of the customer and document them properly it is the most important phase and the first phase after beginning the software project uh, and which information all the information related to the requirements whether it is, they are customer requirements or other types of requirements these requirements are collected from various information sources will be happened in this phase the goal of an analysis part is to remove incompleteness and inconsistencies available in the uh, requirements gathered these anal analyzed requirements are documented uh, later as in the form of software requirement specification shortly known as SRS document. So this is the analysis model. Uh, the person who is responsible for analysis model is analyst. So here uh, requirements of customers and all the stakeholders of the problem, uh, stakeholders of the project are considered. The stakeholders are the people who are involved in the project development from the starting to the ending of software development. And here all the gathered requirements will be validated against the customer acceptance criteria. And this particular requirement document, whatever the prepared, whatever the document we have prepared at the end of requirements analysis phase, this will act as a foundation for design. Then uh, coming to the system design, after requirements phase, the system design phase will be uh, started. The requirements document produced in the requirements analysis phase can act as the foundation for system design. So this system design transforms the user requirements into the suitable uh, design of a software and which helps the programmer to write the code. Uh, in implementation phase, the software design can be defined as uh, the software methods, functions, objects and the overall structure so that the resulting functionality will satisfy the user requirements. The architect or senior members of the team can be uh, are responsible for this design activity and the software design is set to be the core engineering activity out of all the phases of software development life cycle. Why? Because with the good design we can get good code. If we get the good code we have a very less number of errors we'll get which are rectifiable if a software is having very less number of errors and rectifiable then we can get ultimately the error free software at the end so this is the ultimate goal of developing any software product by thereby the customer will be satisfied so the customer satisfaction is directly proportional to the good design that's why the design phase is the core phase of all the activities of software development Coming to the implementation phase, for implementation phase, design which is produced in the design for system design phase can act as the basis for implementation phase. The developer or programmer can write the code based on the design prepared. Uh, in the implementation phase, the team builds the components either from scratch or by composition, combining each other. The development team takes the decision on design document and ensure that the solution follows the design finalized by the architect. At the end of the implementation phase, the person who is responsible for the implementation phase need to ensure that this particular code is developed according to the design prepared. Coming to the testing phase, after writing code, that code, uh, the code need to be tested to find any errors or uh, errors are there or not. So, coming to the testing phase, they, here there are four important levels of testing. Unit testing, integration testing, system testing and acceptance testing. Uh, coming to the unit testing, unit testing is very fundamental testing and which tests the smallest individual units of a program or code. So the integration testing is whatever the modules or units uh, tested in the unit tested, all the unit tested modules are integrated into one software, single software and testing of that integrated software is called as uh, integration testing. After integration testing, the system testing will be performed. In system testing, the testing team tests the complete application and identifies any defects in the application or not. So after system testing, acceptance testing will be done. In acceptance testing, uh, the testing team 
evaluates whether a system meets its business and customer requirements or not. So, at the end of the testing phase, the testers produce the test document. The, act, the persons who are responsible for the entire testing phase are called as testers. They need to produce a testing document which will acts as basic basis for further phases then deployment after testing the software the output of testing phase is error free software now it is the time to deploy or transfer the the product which is in the developer side environment to the customer side environment in the deployment phase actually the deployment uh, the word deployment stands for transferring of one thing from one place to another another environment once the functional and non-functional testing is done on the developer software product developer software can be deployed into the customer's environment in this last phase the product is rolled out and delivered and also installed at the customer's end and support is given to the customers if required feedback is taken from the customers to ensure the quality of the product uh, if the feedback of the customer is positive, then everything is fine. If the feedback of the customer is negative, then again the process will start. Uh, again, it will go back to the development team and uh, they, they need to rectify whatever the uh, suggestions, in, uh, suggestions given by the customer. They need to incorporate and send back the product to the customer side environment. This process can be repeated until the customer satisfies fully with the software development process. The deployment team provides the user manual to the customers along with the software product to provide guidance to the customers in using software product. Here after giving the product to the customer, there is a need of maintenance uh, maintenance phase. So here what actually the maintenance is, we need to maintain the software which we have developed. So it is the most important phase of the software life cycle. There are some types of maintenances are there. Here we are discussing four maintenances. One is corrective maintenance, preventive maintenance, perfective maintenance and adaptive maintenance. The What actually the corrective maintenance is? This type of maintenance is carried out to correct errors that were not discovered during the project development. Whatever the errors we have not discovered during the development, the, those kind of errors can be corrected in the corrective maintenance. Perfective maintenance uh, is carried out to enhance the functionalities of the system based on the customer's request. After receiving the product, the customer wants to enhance the functionality of the existing functionalities of a product. Then this perfective maintenance can come into the picture. Preventive maintenance. The preventive software maintenance helps to make changes and adoptions to already existing software product. If, whenever we want to alter or to make changes in the existing functionality, we need to uh, go for preventive maintenance. Then adaptive maintenance. Adaptive maintenance is usually required for porting the software to work in a new environment. Whenever we are uh, working in the new environment, uh, we are porting our software into uh, adjusted into that uh, new environment, such as work on a new computer platforms or with a new operating system. So in that uh, situation, uh, this adaptive maintenance comes into the picture. So these are different uh, types of maintenances, corrective maintenance, preventive maintenance, perfective maintenance and adaptive maintenance. Then okay, when to use this waterfall model? Uh, there are several process models in uh, so in which situations this waterfall model we need to select. Requirements are very well known, clear and fixed. If uh, for suppose if you want to develop a software product by using waterfall model then there is a clear understanding of requirements and all the requirements are well known and also fixed so product def whenever the product definitions are stable and which cannot be changed and technology is well understood and there are no ambiguous requirements all the requirements should be clear there is no difficulty in understanding all the requirements in those situations only the waterfall model can be applied and resources with required expertise are available freely and uh, the project is very short this waterfall model can be applicable for shorter projects 
in all these situations we can go for waterfall model then coming to the advantages this waterfall model is very simple model to implement and easy to understand phases in this model are processed one at a time each stage in the model is clearly defined this model has very clear and well understood milestones process actions and results are very well documented why because the waterfall model is very systematic model in the execution it will not go back after executing the first phase only it will go to the second phase that's why it is a, it is also referred as a systematic process model this model works well for smaller projects and projects where requirements are very well understood it reinforces good habits like define before design and design before code so in the waterfall model we need to define the problem before designing the problem and uh, we need to design the problem before writing the code this is uh, this is the forward approach we need to follow coming to the disadvantages all the requirements are uh, given equal priority for waterfall model uh, if we want uh, if we develop any software project to using waterfall model there are some advantages coming to the advantages disadvantages are more important here uh, the first disadvantage is all the requirements are given equal priority whatever the requirements which are having less import uh, less prioritized so for those requirements also waterfall model gives uh, the equal priority by this the lot of effort will be wasted and development time also will be lagged all the requirements are frozen at the beginning itself hence there is no scope for accommodating new changes in the middle of the development process in waterfall model whatever the requirements we have all the requirements we need to give in the starting of the project itself there is no scope for adding any new requirement in the middle of the development process if you want to add any new requirement we need to go back in the from the starting we need to start then lack of early risk resolution waterfall model we cannot resolve the risks early why because we cannot find the errors early in the development until testing phase we cannot find any errors in the project we cannot even sense any defects uh, found in the project so the testing phase is last but one phase that's why in early phases we cannot uh, uh, resolve any risks that's why the disadvantage is lack of early risk resolution more expensive error correction there is a statement that for resolving uh, or correcting uh, the cost required to resolving errors in the early stages is less compared to the cost required to resolving errors in the later stages so we are identifying errors here in the later stages that's why we require more more cost to resolve those errors that's why the disadvantage is more expensive error correction staffing is difficult after uh, completing the project uh, whoever the person uh, work worked under each and every phase are allotted to some other activity so again if you, if the customer feedback is negative this project comes into again to the organization that time the persons who are at the starting may be assigned to some other work then we need to recruit another new staff members here so staffing will be difficult so this is also one of the disadvantage of waterfall model and this particular waterfall model is not suitable for complex projects for easy projects we can apply the waterfall model this is not at all suitable for the complex and large projects for easy and short projects only we can apply the waterfall model thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates